Hello friends and welcome back to August Favourites. I love Favourites videos. Basically in these videos we just chat about all of the stuff I've been using and loving in August. So we'll talk about my favourite decks and my favourite books and then at the end of the video we'll talk about YouTube and just other stuff that I've been loving lately. But first I think one of my favourite things of the month has to be that this channel, we are 20,000 subscribers strong. What? Oh, I'm getting stage fright all of a sudden trying to think of like how many people that is. Anyway, thank you all so much for the support over the nearly six years I've been hanging out and making videos on this channel. Thank you so much for being here um, and thank you for being part of my journey. And I was thinking about doing a giveaway, but at the moment with everything going on and postal services around the world kind of struggling, we might put off the giveaway, but I thought we could still do something a bit fun and we'll do a QA. and a And we haven't done one of these in a little while. So if you have any questions for me, whether they're tarot or book related, YouTube related or whatever else, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will make a video soon answering as many of them as I can. But that's enough of that. Now let's talk about the decks. I have two decks to share with you this month. And the first is one of my old favorite Oracle decks and it is the Australian Wildflower Reading Cards by Cheryl and Darcy. I think I've done a review of these cards at some point. So if I have, I'll leave a link in um, um, the cards above. I've had several copies of this deck actually over the years because I find often I tend to just give my copies away as gifts but I've had this one on me for a couple of years now. The artwork in this deck is so beautiful. Sherilyn's like lino print artwork I think it is. It's just so bold and stunning and the colors are so vibrant and alive. And I pulled out this deck recently basically because I've more or less been you know confined to my house um, for the last three weeks. And really I've been confined to my immediate area um, since March. So I haven't been able to go out bushwalking or really leave like my immediate area. And I do live in the inner city. So I haven't been out and just like experiencing the beautiful Australian flora and fauna that I love so much. And so I've been kind of like vicariously connecting with those energies and those experiences that I miss having through this deck. It's not quite as good as the real thing obviously as you know kind of being immersed in the environment itself but taking my time with these cards in the morning and like connecting to um, flowers and plants that I'm so familiar with and that means so much to me has been kind of getting me through this time at the moment a little bit. So I've really enjoyed spending some quality time with an old favorite this month. Then a deck that is certainly not an old favorite but is quickly becoming a favorite it's the Star Spinner Tarot by Trungles. Now this deck I have done a full walkthrough. I did an unboxing and my first impression. So I'll leave that in the cards above. To be fair, there was a lot of like mythological and folk tale sort of um, references in this deck that completely went over my head that I had no idea about. So I don't know how informative or interesting that video is, but if you want to look at the cards, it's a good video for that at least. And the cards, these cards are just so pretty. I love this artwork and I love in particular the color palette. As I said, there are a lot of references and elements to this deck that I'm just not really familiar with. And I think I would like to kind of get invested more. And I think um, uh, Casper from The Boy Diviner has spoken a bit more about the symbolism in this deck. So I need to watch that video. And I think I would at some point like to kind of delve deeper into the the symbolism and the storytelling that goes on behind um, or that has inspired um, the art in this deck. But I think for now, I'm enjoying just having my own relationship with the imagery. So I know there's a lot more layers to this deck that I haven't tapped into yet, but I'm still really enjoying the experience that I am having with this deck. And I've had some wonderful readings. I'm really finding this deck to be a great deck for kind of like the weekly readings because it's quite punchy and specific. Also, I feel like this deck ends up going with any nail polish I put on, whether it's purple or yellow or pink. My nails always just look good with this deck, so it's a winner for Instagram too. I'm such a fucking Libra. All right, so those are the decks. Now let's talk about the books. Before I talk about these books though, I do just wanna let you know in case you're not aware already that I do now have a booktube channel. And so every month I will be doing my favorites videos on this channel like I always have been. But if you want to know about all of the books that I've read this month, um, including the ones I didn't like, uh, cause I think I've read about 15 books this month. 
Um, so I will be doing a full reading wrap up with like stats and everything, um, which will be hopefully going up in a couple of days over on my booktube channel. So if you really want to know all of the things I read, I will leave a link to my channel below and you can go subscribe if you're a book nerd like me. But if you're just keen to hear about like the couple of books that have really stood out to me, then let's, let's get chatting. And the first is a very pretty cover and actually a very quick read, um, but an impactful one. Um, and it is Living on Stolen Land by Amberlynn Quay Mullina. Living on Stolen Land is a prose style manifesto about our settler colonial present. At once a call and a guide to action, this beautifully articulated declaration is a must read for anyone interested in decolonizing Australia. And this little book, it's deceptively small and even just the way that it's presented. Like I thought this was a children's book when I first saw it online. So boy, was I blown away when I got stuck in. And this is so punchy. It's so direct and forthright. It's the sort of thing that just captures you with its authority and its presence. And it's just really, really well done. But there is not a line or a word wasted in here. When I think about the concepts that are in here and what I got from this book, I don't feel like I just read 60 pages, you know, I feel like I read a much heftier book. And I think there's a brilliance to that in itself, like the economical use of words um, and the very intentional use of words. And essentially this book is just speaking to the challenges um, that Australia faces as a settler colonial nation. So it speaks about decolonization, racism, sovereignty, land rights. It talks about biases and solidarity and um, the different types of allyship, both the effective and the ineffective, the helpful and the harmful. I want to read you a little bit because um, there's even a part about time and the West, like the imposed Western idea of linear time. Linear time is something that settlers brought here, a version of time that creates distance. Things that happened a hundred years ago are further away than the things that happened yesterday. A version of time that is always carrying people away from an unchangeable past into an unknowable future giving the illusion of progress regardless of whether anything changes. In indigenous systems, time is not linear. It moves in cycles, it exists in space, in country, and is as susceptible to action and interaction as any other life. On such a view, the ticking of clocks, the turning of calendars, makes nothing happen, moves nothing closer or further away from anything else. How far we have come from the apocalypses and dystopias of settler colonialism is measured by the degree to which affected relationships have been brought into balance and have been healed. To think of time in this way is a gift and a responsibility. I just loved this. It feels like a like a mantra or like a rally cry or something. Like it's just, it's so potent. And obviously whilst this is based on the Australian context and the Aboriginal experience, I think it could apply and the ideas could certainly apply to any settler colonial nation. Now for another non-fiction, it's My Place by Sally Morgan. This was one of the books that I received in the um, Wild Book Box recently. So this is a bit of a spoiler if you plan on watching that vlog over on my booktube channel. But this is basically a memoir um, and it was published in 1987. So it's a little bit older now and I'd never heard of it before. So I was so excited when it showed up in the Wild Book Box. But basically this is the story of Sally and her family, particularly her mother and her grandmother and of Sally growing up in the 50s and 60s and discovering that, you know, she's not white and the other children kind of insist on her labeling herself um, and telling them where she's from. And when she goes home to ask um, her mum and her grandmother, you know, where are we from? They tell her and her siblings that they are from India because they figure they can pass as Indian, um, but it is safer and better in their mind than everybody finding out that they're Aboriginal. But as um, Sally gets older and she comes to realize that they're not Indian, they are in fact Aboriginal, she becomes very determined to basically uncover her family history and to tell it, to publish it. As she says in the book, so much has been written about Aboriginal people, um, white people writing about Aboriginal people, but nothing or very little um, had been published by Aboriginal writers about their own lived experience at this point in time. So Sally's determined to uncover her history and to tell her family story. But obviously it's a little bit tricky getting information, especially when her mum and in particular her grandmother are so secretive. And I feel like for her mum, it's almost like learned behavior. Whereas for her grandmother, it is true, truly deeply rooted fear and shame. Sally also travels like 2000 kilometers to go back to where she knows her grandmother was from originally to see if she can find 
more information and she ends up meeting relatives she never knew she had. Oh, this book always makes me emotional. <laughs> and especially the older Aboriginal people in that town are just like so thrilled to have their family come home. And so this is not just the story of like what it was like for Aboriginal people at this point in time. It is also the story of this family reclaiming their history um, and reclaiming their identity and their family. And I think this book feels like an incredible gift from Sally, but more than that, I think she gave her mum and her grandmother, oh my God. <laughs> but more than that, I think she gave an incredible, an incredible priceless gift to her mum and her grandmother of freeing them, at least to some extent, from the shame and fear that they were brought up with. So incredible, incredible. I cannot recommend this more highly. I can't, every time I try to talk about it, I end up crying because it's just so powerful and moving. Okay, now for a fiction. I finally read The Yield by Tara Jean Winch. This was the Blossom Book Club book, the book club that I host over on my Patreon. Um, this was our book for the month of August. Now this book has been a pretty big deal in Australia. It was published mid last year um, and it won the Miles Franklin Award, which is one of the biggest literary awards here in Australia. And it is an incredible story. I loved this and we haven't had our live chat this month yet that's happening on Monday um, but from the feedback in the discord and stuff I think uh, a lot of the other people who have read this along with the book club have really loved it too. Basically this is an incredible story but the writing is just amazing as well and the and the storytelling devices too I just think are brilliant. Um, so it's told from three perspectives. The main one that's sort of like driving our narrative forward is like present day um, and it is told from the perspective of like I think she's 29 her name's August and she's an Aboriginal woman but she's been living in the UK for the past 10 years and the story begins when she comes home because her grandfather Poppy has just died and so when she comes home she's confronted by a few things one is the trauma of her own childhood and losing her sister um, and then the other is also that um, her grandmother is basically being kicked off um, her property because it is going to be mined. And so because of that, the element of like native title and land rights also comes into this story quite strongly. Then our second narrator is I think probably my favorite um, and that is Poppy. Uh, so August's grandfather. And basically in the few months before he passed, he knew he was going to die. So he decided to write down his own story. Um, but he did it in a very interesting way. Basically, he wanted to keep his language alive. Um, so he's written a dictionary, but each of the entries tells a part of his story. So it not only is keeping his story and his truth alive, but it's also keeping his language alive. And then the third part of the story is told um, through a letter that a priest wrote who ran the mission in the area. Um, before Poppy was born. Profoundly moving and exquisitely written, The Yield is a story of a people and a culture dispossessed, but it is as much a celebration of what was and what endures and a powerful reclaiming of indigenous language, storytelling and identity. So incredible, absolutely incredible. I was gonna talk about two other books, but these three really were like my big five star reads of the month. And I feel like I spoke about them quite a bit. So let's get on to the other things. Um, and if you're curious about all of the other books I read, you can, like I said, subscribe to my booktube channel and that wrap up will be up soon. Now it is time for the other stuff, which is a very vague section of the favorites video where I just talk about other stuff that I've loved during the month. It's actually been quite a big month for my channel. Um, obviously, like I said at the beginning, we've hit 20K subs, which is amazing. There was, however, another cool milestone, which was, it was the first birthday of the Blossom Book Club. So it's a whole year ago, back in August, we started the Blossom Book Club and my Patreon over there. So it has been 12 fabulous months of hanging out and reading lots of really good books together. To celebrate that, I did a video where I ranked all of the books that we have read together. I have still not read one of them, but I have read 11. Um, so I basically just spoke about all of the books that we read and what I thought of them. So happy birthday, Blossom Book Club. Thank you so much to everybody who's participated in any capacity over there. Um, it has been one of my favorite things um, of the last 12 months, that book club um, and the Discord and everything just is really fun. So thank you so much. Now, something else that I was really nervous, but also super excited about was that I was featured on, I was the guest star on Speaking of Which podcast with Sammy Menzo and Skylar Hayes. That's the podcast that I talk about nearly every month. Um, and that I have said is like my fantasy to be on. 
Um, it finally happened, friends. My dream has come true. I've reached my peak. Now, honestly, that has been one of the highlights of my year. I have felt so socially deprived and lonely. Not gonna lie, it's been rough, friends. It's been rough. Especially the second time around in lockdown. I feel like the novelty of like Zoom hangouts with your friends and stuff, it's just, it's kind of all worn off. And I've been very isolated. I'm lucky I have Blair, obviously, but I don't really speak to anybody. <laughs> So um, that was just like a delight and also just so fun. I had so much fun. It was what you expect if you've watched or listened to the Speaking of Witch podcast before. Sammy and Skylar are a mess and chaotic, but so fun and just really friendly people. So I had a great time. Uh, so I will leave a link to the video below if you want to see our peak visuals. Otherwise you can listen to it um, on any podcast platform. And then this one is for the armies. I know I have plenty of you here. Dynamite, we got a new BTS song and this little kind of new disco number was so colorful and fun. I won't say it's my favorite BTS song. I tend to prefer their kind of like hip hop and like their harder songs, like Mike Drop and, and Bepsay is my favorite song. Like I just prefer that side of BTS. They cover lots of genres, but there was something just so fun and lighthearted about Dynamite that just, Watching that video, I couldn't help but smile. It was so colorful and cheery. And I know that was their aim. They said that they released this song to cheer us all up in this very difficult time. I've just realized that my books are wonky because I took out, like that's where um, the yield was. Oh, that's really annoying. I hope, I hope it hasn't been annoying you this whole video. <laughs> Anyway, that is enough for this video. Thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you had a good month and I would love to hear in the comments below some of the stuff you've been really enjoying, whether it's books or decks or videos or whatever, whatever, let me know. And don't forget to ask me some questions for our 20K Q&A video that I will do soon. And again, thank you all so much for the support over the years. It's been incredible. I'm still very often surprised by the, the kind of the community that we've developed here and everything. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So thank you so much. I'll keep working hard and trying hard to make content that is worthy of the platform that you've given me. Um, so thank you so much. And of course, a big extra special thank you to everybody over on my Patreon and my Blossom Book Club. Thank you so much for a year. It's been fabulous. And a big extra special thank you goes to Tracy Timmerman, Laurie, Lynette Brown, The Hales K and Carly Cravat. So I'll talk to you all in the comments below and in the next video. And until then, so much love. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,